Continuing with our projectile motion problems, this problem follows pretty much the same way all other projectile motion problem goes, except it showcases some of the more advanced mathematical tools that we may need to solve some of the particular unknown. The setup here is fairly straightforward, while the math is a little tricky, but once I show you all the tools that we have at our disposal, it hopefully wouldn't be too bad. Let's make sense of the situation first with a little drawing. We have a tennis player serving the tennis ball. So say he's back here, he's got his racket up in the air, and he is shooting with a pretty massive velocity, initial velocity, at a certain angle below the horizontal, as they say. And then it kind of goes down. And the question is, first of all, does it clear the net, which is over here? And then secondly, does it land inside or outside the service box? So we want to know where it lands. We're given some numbers here, which is good to keep track of. So at say time equals T zero over here, that's one point we're interested in. We know it's 2.5 meters up in the air. And then later, just as it goes over the net, we're interested in that point, which we know is 11.9 meters between the net and the service line. And that the height of the net is 0 0.91 meters. Then there's another time here, we want to know about when it lands. We don't know any of these times, so we'll use time zero, time one, and time two as our placeholder for now. And once again, we will write the kinematics equation for the X and the Y separately, and then solve for the appropriate numbers. Before we can do that though, it's important to set up a coordinate system. So let's call this point X equals zero and have X being horizontal but let's set it out that way because I've already drawn the tennis player serving from right to left. So that's my X. And then we'll keep on with having positive Y upwards and we'll call Y equals zero at the ground. So very critically, my Y zero is not zero this time, it's up at 2.5 because at time equals T zero, my ball is up here at 2.5 meters. Again, we can write for part A anyways to find out what happens as it gets to that point. Zero plus V O X T plus one half A X T square. It's good to write everything out the first time for completeness, but of course we know some of the stuff goes away, such as A X is equal to zero. Y naught is not equal to zero this time, but X naught is equal to zero. Collecting our information, we know X zero is zero, Y zero is 2.5 meters. We're given X one because it has to travel all the way to the net. So 11.9 meters, positive, because we've defined that way to be positive. And Y one isn't zero either, it's at the top of the net. So 0 0.91 meters. We have those. We don't know what T1 is. We do know what AX and AY is. And then we can also break down and work out my VOX and VOY. But before we get to do that, their Peskin gave us the speed in kilometers an hour, but everything else is in meters and probably seconds. So let's convert the V0 into meters per second. And this you probably have done so much as second nature now. Through the calculator we get 47.222. Repeating, keeping a few extra digits, there you go. So this next bit is going to get a little messy. Because we don't know theta, the only thing we can say is VOX is equal to cosine theta and VOY is going to be negative because the angle is below the horizontal, V naught sine theta. Even though we have a number for V naught, we don't know the theta yet. So let's see what happens when we try and sub things in. X1 we know.
And then for y, we do a very similar thing. Vy naught is negative, don't forget. So for both of these equations, we can't get anywhere because we have theta and we have t in it. And since we're interested in theta, let's eliminate t by using the top and solving for t. Because these both terms are zero, it's as simple as taking all this mess and dumping it underneath. So you get t is equal to 11.9 meters over 47.222 meters per second cosine theta. The units again work out. We get just seconds on top. And then we sub this t into these two spots. So that's t subbed in there. Seconds cancel out. And this batch of number cancels out as well, which is nice. Let's collect that together. That's negative 4.9. So we still get up meters on both sides, which is good. Let's make it a little cleaner. Um, there's only so much we can do here. We end up with a somewhat lengthy equation that we can't really get much into because it's got both sine theta and cosine theta and a cosine square theta. So therefore, what we have to resolve to do is to use our graphing calculator to graph a line, call that y1, and put all this as y2, graphing those two lines and find out where they intersect to find us our theta, which is our unknown. And while you may have your graphing calculator with you, I can't really show this on my screen. So I instead use this free online website that has a graphing calculator on it at desmos.com. Fairly easy to use. You enter in your uh, equations using the various buttons down here, including your functions. And so I've already done that. I've got my left hand side, y equals 0.91, and my right hand side, where theta has been replaced with x. I get some really crazy graphs. But let's not forget, we should be using degrees, not radians. And so we can find out this particular point, which is our intersect, and that's 6.117 degrees. From the graphing calculator, we got that the theta is 6.11 degrees. So that answers our part A. For completeness sake, Now that the ball has cleared the net, the second question in part B is, does it land in or not? And so say we have the tennis player here again, serving, we're basically trying to find out how far it lands. Since we've set our x equals zero way back here, let's just solve for what x two is first this being t at time two. Again, we don't know what time it is, but we already have our theta, which is gonna help us quite a bit in our calculation. So we're gonna relate all the way back to the beginning. So we have x zero, x zero, xt plus one half et square x, and this of course is zero. And then we have y two, which we know as zero because it's at the ground now. Looking at up top, we don't have x2 and we don't have t. So let's deal with the other equations first. Here we have 0 is equal to 2.5 meters plus again our 40.22 meters per second negative sine, we now have an angle. And again, plus negative 9.80 meters per second square times time square. 
Oh, I forgot the time here. And now we're having another little bit of a tougher algebraic problem because we have t and t square in the same equation. Well, to solve that, we need to employ the quadratic formula. Remind of what the quadratic formula is. I'll use t in terms of the unknown instead of x as you might be used to because t is our unknown in this case. As long as we have this form, something times t squared plus something times t plus something is equal to zero, this equal to zero, very, very important, then we have that t is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is something you might want to keep handy and keep available in terms of your formula sheets. In my case, a is equal to this chunk, so it's negative 4.9. We'll drop the units for now because we can see and check that t will have to be in seconds for it to all work out. b is this whole thing, so there's your negative 47.222 sine 6.11 degrees. And your c is positive 2.5. Putting it into here, doing some calculator work, you'll find two answers. 1.343 seconds negative or 0 0.3662 seconds. In our case, of course, we expect time to go forward from the serve to the landing. So we're going to reject the negative and we have our time. With our time, we sub it into my x kinematics equation for position and we can get what we need x0 is 0, so x2 is equal to 0 plus 42, 7.222 meters per second, cosine 6.11 degrees, times this time that we're given, or we just found out, plus 0. And we end up getting that x2 is 17.195 or so meters. Well, what does that mean? Thinking back to the diagram, what we have found is that from here, clears the net to the landing spot is 17.195. But that's not what we're ultimately interested in. We just want this bit and make, we want to make sure that that bit is less than 6.4 meters in front of the net. Then to find that out, of course, I have to subtract the original 11.9 meters. So this particular distance here is 17.195 minus 11.9 meters, giving us 5.3 meters, which is in fact less than the 6.4 that's required. So the ball lands in as a valid serve. Definitely a little lengthier of a question and uses some of the more advanced mathematical tools. So that's why I want to show you this particular question, including the graphing calculator and also the quadratic formula.